Hi guys, today I will be taking you through Form 2 Word Processing, that is the theory part. In this session, we shall cover the following. Therefore, we can look at our course outline. Uh, we shall look at the introduction, that is, we shall look at the advantages, features in word processing, purposes, and also factors to consider when choosing a word processor. We shall also look at creating documents using a word processor, where we shall check at the starting or launching Microsoft Word, saving a document, protecting and crossing a document. Uh, on the other hand, we shall look at the editing a document, we shall look at blocking or highlighting or selecting, deleting, copying, cutting, searching and proofreading. We shall also look at formatting a document, that is formatting text, paragraph formatting, page and document formatting, creating tables, uh, table formatting and editing. Uh, on the other hand, we shall look at inserting graphics and special symbols, that is graphic object, shapes, screenshots, uh, pictures and lastly we shall look at uh, uh, printing a document. Word processing. Now, word processing is the art of text manipulation. It involves creating and producing professional looking documents such as letters, memos, reports, etc. Then we also have uh, uh, a word processor. A word processor is a computer program that enables a person to create, save, retrieve, edit, format, and print text-based documents. Now, initially, the term word processor was used to refer to a computer system with a special piece of software used for the document uh, production or production of documents. We can also see a uh, look at the purpose of word processing. A word processor is a tool that can be used to prepare and produce documents. <clears throat> it can be used in writing letters, that is uh, business and general mail, that is also writing memos, books, writing articles, essays, uh, CV, that is curriculum vitae, uh, etc. Therefore, you can <coughs> see that word processor is very much uh, crucial. It is something that you really need to uh, run. Then we can look at the common features or characteristics of a word processor. A word processor performs the same function as a typewriter, but offers very many useful features, stroke facilities, which can be used to make your work more efficient and attractive. And therefore, a word processor can be used to produce quality finished documents of high standards compared to a typewriter. The following are some of the facilities or features provided by a word processor. The first one, they allow the user to create a file, save it and retrieve or recover or open it when required for year. There is also a very important feature called find. Uh, you can find a phrase or a word at any given time just by pressing Ctrl H or Ctrl F or uh, clicking on the binoculars, that is the find icon. You also have another feature called search and replace or find and replace. This one uh, checks for an occurrence of a certain word and then replace it with uh, another phrase or word. Uh, we, then we have undo. In case you make a mistake, instead of uh, repeating everything, you can just click on the undo uh, or redo uh, button. That one will actually assist you to uh, to just go direct to where uh, you want, uh, where you were uh, previously. Then, on the other hand, we, it contains text and page formatting features such as justification of text which would be left, right, center, or full. Therefore, uh, when we talk about page formatting, that is, we have alignment. Alignment is 
positioning text within the margins like you can position it to the your left right center or justified that means it is not from the left and not from the right it's just somewhere there you can also have ident to ident is to push the paragraph or sentence a few inches or millimeters from the margin you can just do that by clicking on increase ident or decrease ident you also have page name numbering uh, page numbering is where you put the pages that is page one page two page three that way that one is made possible by uh, Microsoft Word or by a word processor. You can also insert headers and footers. Headers are statements that repeat at the top of page. Like you can uh, look at your daily nation or your newspaper. The heading is repeated up there for every page. That is a header. Whereas the statement repeated at the bottom of a page, that is for every page, we refer it as a footer. It has different fonts. Fonts are um, writings. That is uh, writings. You can write different styles. That is character sizes, styles. We have bold, italics, underline. It enables printing of documents, single or multiple copies. It enables creation of tables. You can create tables other than drawing them manually. Then it also ha has an inbuilt dictionary. You don't need to cram words. We just uh, make a mistake right click and then the computer uh, will automatically uh, it will actually automatically do correction for you then all word processors have similar document uh, windows with the following features they are designed to look like a piece of paper with a few electronic improvements the screen is blank before typing any text there is a cursor that is which brings at the position where you can begin entering text. There is a status bar that provides the user with information about current status, such as saving operation, the name of the file in use, the current page, the column where the cursor is, also the word count. It, uh, also, some of the other features include word wrap. Word wrap is a feature that automatically moves a word or cursor to the beginning of the next line if there is insufficient room at the end of the current line. You have ever noticed that when you are typing, when you reach the end of the page, the cursor automatically froze to the start of a new sentence. That is called word wrapping. And therefore that facility is called word wrap. They also have scrolling. We have the vertical and horizontal scroll bars where you can go inside of the screen. You also have help. In case you mess up, you can press F1 or help or the question mark. Uh, in many cases, it's tweeted at the top right corner. Also, they have editing modes. We have insert mode and type over mode. When you talk about insert mo mode, every character typed, every character typed between words, lines or characters is placed at the cursor position. That means if I want to add a uh, a word in between a sentence i just click where the i want then i type that is insert mode on the other hand we usually have type over mode this one it deletes what was there before and replaces it with the new text as at the cursor position this means that as you type the words on your right are erased or replaced automatically that is the the type over mode then on the other hand um, we can look at the common examples of word processors. What are the common examples of word processors that are actually used today? We have Microsoft Word, we have Corel Word Perfect, Rotas Word Pro, Word Star, we have WPS, and also we have Open Office Writer. Those are some of the examples of word processors that you can find in the market in use. But in my tutorial or in my lessons, I'll be using Microsoft Word. Then let's look at the advantages of word processors. A word processor have almost, have almost replaced typewriters and other writing tools as the, as, the, as the means of creating documents. 
This is because our ad processor have a number of advantages that include a document can be stored in the computer for future reference. Once you type a document today uh, and you want to use it next year, you don't need to retype it. You just need to uh, get it and then use it. Typing using a word processor is easier. It is easier and more efficient because some actions are automated. For example, word wrap. We have, autom uh, we have explained what is word wrap. We have something like page numbering. Then most word processors have special editing tools such as spelling and grammar checkers. You'll notice that as you make mistakes, they are underlined using green or red with the lines. This is to allow the spelling and grammar checker help you to edit the spellings. We also have an inbuilt dictionary. We refer to it as the Saurus. This provides synonyms and an atonym. It, it gives you this, uh, the words with similar meaning and opposite meanings. Therefore, you, can, you don't need a dictionary other than Microsoft Word. They also support insert and type over modes. I have explained that in previous uh, session. Word processors have superior document formatting features such as underlining, borrowed facing, italicization, applying different colors, etc. They can also uh, allow you to insert photos, images, and crop them. A word processor enables one to produce many copies of a document through printing. A word processor has cut, copy, and paste commands that enable user to incorporate other text without having to retype it. Therefore, using Microsoft Word, if I want to copy a paragraph, I don't need to retype. I just uh, highlight it, select copy, then paste. It also allows you to use passwords, provide secrecy in writing documents through passwords. You can protect your document by assigning passwords uh, when you're saving. When you are saving, just go to tools, then you go to general, then you go to set password, you key in the password. They allow simple arithmetic operations such as addition, multiplication. Also, they allow many match, many merging. This is whereby you write one document and then send it to many people. Then some of the disadvantages, we usually say everything that has advantages must have uh, disadvantages. And therefore, the disadvantages of this is that they are expensive. The use, the use of word processor creates unemployment. The use of word processors is limited only to those areas with the power supply, that is electricity. There is need of literate person to operate a word processor. Then you have factors to consider when choosing a word processor. If you are sent to the market to buy a word processor, remember you have looked at various examples of word processors. And therefore, if you are asked to look at factors to consider or you are sent a word processor, then number one, that you, you must select the type of operating system you are using. For example, most microcomputers are currently running on Windows-based operating system. This means that we should consider acquiring a word processor based on a graphical user interface. It is user, it's user friendliness that is easy to use. You must choose a word processor that is, 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 uh, uh, that is easy to use. It's formatting and editing features. They should be good and in a wide variety. Uh, on the other hand, you can look at now Microsoft Word. Uh, let's look at Microsoft Word in depth. And therefore, this one will now help us to understand this one more. What is Microsoft Word? It is a word processing program. It helps in creating professional looking documents that can be printed. For example, letters. Uh, reports, memos, essays, projects, books, etc. More about Microsoft Word. Let's look more about Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is one of the com components of Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is an integrated software with a number of interrelated programs. 
which include Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and others. Now, Microsoft Office allows the user to work with programs that have the same basic structure and interface. It allows it also allows the users to share information quickly and easily between different programs. There are several versions of Microsoft Word. The most common being we have Word 97, Word 2000, we had, um, we had Word um, XP 2003, uh, we have 2016, 2013, 2019, uh, currently, I am teaching you using version 2019, but you will get that 2007 or the way to 2019, they share a lot in common. And therefore, we can look at the screen. That is the screen for Microsoft Word 2019. Therefore, this is how Microsoft Word 2019 looks like. We have the ribbons up there. You can also have the uh, look at the quick access toolbar up there. We have save, undo, redo, a new document uh, there. Then we have the white area. That is the working area. That is the working area where you type your documents. Then you have the document views down there. And therefore, this is how the scene looks like. We have the file, home, insert, design layout, but reference, mailings, review, those ones are the same across all the, the offices. Then let's look at how to create a new document. How do you create uh, a new document? There are several ways to create new documents. You can open an existing document and save documents in Word. And therefore, to, to do that, to create a new document, I uh, usually go to file, therefore you usually go to file, then you click on new. You can also click on new button from the quick access toolbar. Somebody else might uh, use the method of pressing control and N on your keyboard. That is you depress the, uh, you depress the control key while pressing the N just for once. If you hold for several minutes, you create hundreds of uh, pages but in case you're using microsoft office 2007 you go to the microsoft office button situated at your extreme left top then you can access new but for the new offices 2010 20, uh, 2013 2016 2019 you access from file then new then once you create uh, you create a document you can save it and uh, after saving, you can open it using the following method. That is opening an existing document. You can press Ctrl plus O on your keyboard. Or uh, alternatively, you can press Fire. You can, that is click on Fire, then click on Open. Then on the dialog box, you browse the location of your file and then click on it or double click on it. And therefore, when you want to save a document, you can click the button shown here. That is the purpleish button indicated by the red arrow. Or you can just go, you click fire and then save or save us. Remember, if you are sending the document to someone who does not have Office 2007 or the above versions, you will need to click on the Office button, click on Save Us, and then click on you convert Word 97 to 2003. That is called compatibility mode. Somebody else might just uh, opt to press Control S. That is a keyboard shortcut for saving. But the easiest method for saving is to press the Save button shown here using the Quick Access Toolbar. Then once you save a document, there is this option called Save As. Save As command is used to uh, in three circumstances or situations. Number one, when you are saving a file for the first time. Secondly, when you want to rename the location or to rename the document. And those are the three instances, to rename a document or to change the location. And therefore, renaming a document. To rename a document, 
the best and easiest method is the one that I have showed you here. Select the document, right click on it, then select rename and type the, the new name. That one will be the easiest method of uh, actually uh, renaming a file. On the other hand, uh, we can look at um, working with on multiple documents. Several documents can be opened simultaneously if you are trying or if you are typing or editing multiple documents at once. All open documents will be listed in the view tab of the ribbon when you click on switch windows. The current document has a check mark beside the file name. Select another another open document to view it. Therefore, I have shown you where to go. You go to view. Then you have the switch windows. Then you have the document views. There are, there are many ways to view a document in Word. We have print layout. We have full screen reading. We have web layout. We also have outline and draft. Therefore, uh, there are many ways to view this. Print layout. This is a view of the document as it would appear when printed. Some people call it print preview. It includes all tables, text, graphics, and images. Then you have full screen reading. This is a full view length width of a document, good for viewing two pages at a time. Then you have a web layout. This is a view of a document as it would appear in a web browser. Therefore, in case you convert it to a website, uh, you can use web layout to see how it will look like. Then you have the outline. This is an outline form of document in form of bullets. Therefore, it will be outlined uh, in terms of bullets or points. And to, to go to view, to document views, you click on the view tab on the ribbon. Ribbon is the top uppermost part. Then you click on a document that is the appropriate document view you want. You can also access it at your left, sorry, at your right bottom corner of every screen. The document views are actually uh, there. Then uh, you can look at uh, the this one. Therefore, Word 2019 offers a wide range of customer, ca customizable options. Uh, to access these customization options, you click on the Office button. That is in case you're using Microsoft Word 2007. But in case you're using 2010 or the 2019, you click on Fire. You click on Fire. Then uh, Word Options, like I have shown you. You go to Options. In Microsoft 2007, it is written Word Options. But in other uh, versions, uh, it's written Options. Therefore, the only difference is the word option. And therefore, after doing that, you will get the following options. We have the, this is the word options. We have popular. We have display, proofing, save, advanced, custom, add in, trust center, and resources. Let's start by looking what is in popular. Popular. These features allow you to personalize your work environment with language, color schemes, username and allow you to access the live preview feature. The live preview feature allows you to preview the results of applying design and formatting changes without actually applying it. Therefore, you have the popular. Then you have the display. This feature allows you to modify, to modify how the document content is displayed on the screen and when printed you can opt to show or hide certain page elements therefore we have that is the the display then we have the the what that is the the proofing proofing this feature allows you personalize how word corrects and formats your text you can customize auto correction settings and half word ignore certain words or errors in the document. Therefore, you, you can see uh, we have the 
the options that is the cust customable options that um, uh, you can actually work on we have we looked at popular display and proofing we also have the save now the save helps you to uh, to actually change the save location you can see from this dog, uh, diagram whereby in normal circumstances when you save a document it is automatically saved in the my documents but you can browse there and choose where you will be saving your files other than my documents then you have the advanced this feature allows you to specify options for editing copying pasting displaying printing and saving therefore you can still explore that one now when you go to advanced this is what you see they have you can see you have cut copy and paste then you can choose various options that you wish to be applied wherever you are using that uh, copy cut or paste options then you have customize this allows you to add features to the quick access to Ruba. if there are tools that you are utilizing frequently you may want to add this to the quick access to Ruba. like for example some people may opt to uh, to add superscript and subscript and other features that are not actually available in the toolbar. Then you have typing and inserting text. To enter text, just start typing. The text will appear where the blinking cursor is located. Move the cursor by using the arrow buttons on the keyboard or positioning the mouse and clicking the left button. The keyboard shortcuts listed below are also helpful when moving through the text as document. Therefore, you can, there is the move action and the keystroke, like beginning of the line, you can touch home. You, if you want to take the cursor at the end of the line, you can just tap end. Top of the document, you can press control home or control end to go to the end of the document. Then selecting text. To change any attributes of text, it must be highlighted first. Select the text by dragging the mouse over the desired text while keeping the left mouse button depressed. Or hold down the shift key on the keyboard while using the arrow buttons to highlight the text. The following table contains shortcuts for selecting a portion of text. Therefore, you have the selection and the technique. If you want to select the whole word, you double click within the word. When you want to select the whole paragraph, you triple click within the paragraph. If you want to select several words or lines, you drag the mouse over the words or hold down the shift key while using the arrow keys. The entire document, you can press Ctrl A or select R from the ribbon. The best and easiest method is to press Ctrl A. Then we have to deselect if you want to deselect text you just click anywhere outside the selection or you can press escape key that one can help you to uh, do that then inserting additional text text can be inserted in a document at any point using any of the following methods type text put your cursor where you want to add the text and begin typing uh, second method, you can copy and paste text, that is highlight the text you wish to copy and right click and click copy. Put your cursor where you want the text in the document and right click and click on paste. Then we usually have cut and paste text. This one, you highlight the text you wish to copy and right click and click cut. Put your cursor where you want the text in the document and right click and select paste. That is, you click on paste. On the other hand, you can drag text. That is, highlight the text you wish to move, click on it, and drag it to the place where you want the text in the document. Therefore, you will notice that you can also use the clipboard option on the ribbon. Therefore, we have, uh, have a screenshot here of to show you the cut, copy, and the clipboard. Remember, the clipboard is the temporary memory that keeps the copied or 
cut text before it is pasted. It's just a, a temporary memory for that case. Therefore, I have shown you the cut button. We have the copy and also the clipboard. Then let's look at the rearranging block of text. To rearrange text within a document, you can neutralize the clipboard group on the home tab on the ribbon. You insert picture of insert picture of clipboard group ribbon. Okay, therefore move text. You cut and paste or drag as shown above. Copy text, copy and paste as above. Paste text, you can click on this button uh, I am showing you here, the paste button, that is the orange button here, or you can press Ctrl and V on your keyboard. Then how do you delete text? Use the backspace or delete keys on the keyboard to delete text. Therefore, basically you just highlight what you want, then you press delete or backspace. You can also right click and select cut and then forget about it. Then you have search and replace text. This one I had explained earlier. You press, you click on find on the editing group on the ribbon, or you press Ctrl plus F or Ctrl plus H, then follow the instructions. Now, in case you mess up, you can click this button I'm showing you here. That is the button facing on your left. It's called undo. Then the other one uh, there looks as like a circle is called redo. Therefore, when you and you mess up, you just press undo. This one takes you to previous redone action. Then to change the font typeface, uh, you can click where we have Caribri body. That is that down arrow near red 11. That is in the home key. We have the, the font, the font group. Now the font group usually is actually shown by BIU. That is bold, italics, and unrhymed. And therefore, you can change the font color here, size, and the font, uh, that is the font face, the typeface. To change the font size, uh, you press where I'm showing you in the red buttons, where we have 11. You click that down arrow and then choose the, the font you want. But note, before you do that, you must select text. You must highlight where you want that uh, text to be applied for you to do anything. I had said earlier, for you to do anything, you have to highlight. That is to tell Microsoft Word that this is the point I want to effect this. Then we have the quick formatting uh, toolbar. This one, when you right click, when you highlight text and then right click, you see this uh, small dialog box. This uh, small dialog box here, we call it the quick format toolbar. The quick format toolbar will allow you to change the font face, uh, to change the size, to change the, the color. Search. You can also uh, format, you can also format the you can also format the that is you can also format the text in terms of alignment. We have the alignment. We have the indent, and therefore you can see we have uh, this one. You can apply your text. Like now, I have highlighted this text. When I click on this button, it becomes bold. When I click on this one, it becomes italics. Then I can choose the font face here. That is Algerian monogothi. You can choose Times New Roman, Tahoma. I wrote, we have many. I you agency here. The text you want. Then size. You can increase the font size by clicking on this arrow. Then you'll get up to 100. Uh, then we have the this one's to change capital letters. Small letters change case. This is for changing color. This is to highlight. This is arrangement. This is the events, bullets, and numbering format painter. Therefore, when you highlight text, you, write, uh, you just right click, then you get this quick uh, formatting bar. That one makes everything easier. Then you can also look at bullets and numbering. Uh, to order list of items, you can apply bullets and numbering. This is formatting. You highlight the items, then go home, then paragraph group. You are shown, you just go and choose bullets. Alternatively, you can opt to use this 
quick format bar these are the bullets you just tap this arrow then choose the bullets you want or so numbers then you have drop caps a drop cap is an enlarged letter at the beginning of a paragraph to apply a drop cap highlight the letter then go to insert uh, in the ribbon then that is the insert tab then go to the text group then select drop cap as shown below therefore uh, for example i want to make b of the word boniface here this b i want to make it drop cap and therefore you see i have gone to insert then i have gone to the text group this is the text group then i have gone to drop cap and therefore we have dropped drop cap and in margin drop cap these are the two types of drop cap you can see how they looks like in margin is outside the margin whereas dropped uh, it has displaced several lines the once you select if you select three lines then it will be it will be dropped for three lines then we have change case to switch between lower case and upper case or small letters and capital letters you can use change case feature highlight the sentence or paragraph go to home then to the font group then change case therefore i have shown you that one very well therefore you go home then you go to font group these ones are called groups for example you have paragraph group font group and clipboard group then from here you see this aa we have the sentence case lower case upper case uh, togo and um, the title case or capitalize each letter we call it title case and therefore sentence case this option capitalizes the first letter of each sentence in the selection or it is normally a normal sentence lower case this option makes all the selected text lower case or small letters upper case this option capitalizes each letter in the selection that is it converts everything to capital letters then you have title case this option capitalizes the first letter of each word in the selection you also have the togo case this option switches the case of each letter in the selection lower case becomes upper and vice versa you can also take a, a, a look at how to change text color to change the text color select the text and click the color button included on the font group of the ribbon of the that is of the home ribbon alternatively you can right click then use the the format the quick format toolbar that i have shown you in the previous uh, screen you can also highlight text uh, if uh, if you want to highlight text you use the highlighter that is you highlight text then you use the highlighter as shown therefore this is the highlighter this is a b and then there is a pencil you just click this arrow and get uh, various colors and therefore you'll be in a position to highlight a paragraph using the color you choose and then in case you want to copy format uh, you highlight then you click this button it's called the format painter and then drag on it on the next text it will actually apply exact text that was in the previous session then to clear formatting select the text you wish to clear formatting click the stylus dialog box on the stylus group on the home tab then click clear all therefore you click on this point here then we have clear all i have shown you uh, how it works this is the style group then you click on this arrow here then you you have clear all that's in case you want to clear the formatting then we have uh, change format alignment in case i want to uh, deal with alignment uh, the alignment are found in the paragraph of the home tab to change paragraph alignment the paragraph alignment allows you to set how you want text to appear to change the alignment click on the home tab choose the appropriate button for alignment on the paragraph group we have align left the text is aligned within your left margin we have center the text is centered within your margins we have align right aligns text with the right margin we have justify it aligns text to both the left and the right margin therefore these are the types of alignment in case you were asked in an exam we have align left center right and justified 
and therefore in case you want to highlight and align text you just highlight then go and choose these buttons you have the left align center you have the right align and justified then we have ident identing paragraphs allows you uh, you set text within a paragraph at different margins rather some people will tell you that uh, indentation is pushing a paragraph few millimeters from the margin that one is Raymond language and very correct and therefore we have the following uh, types of indenting we have first rain ident we have hanging rain we have left and right now first rain it controls the left boundary for the first line of the paragraph then we have the hanging controls the left boundary of every line in a paragraph except the first one we then we have the left controls the left boundary from every line in a paragraph then we have the right indentation controls the right boundary for every line in a paragraph therefore in this dialogue in this screenshot we have the indentation icons we have the decreased indent and the increased indent these two here therefore these are the indentation we are talking about then we have the others here like, like uh, from this button you will be in a position to see the hanging rain the first rain the left from the dialog box and therefore to indent paragraphs you can do the following click the indent buttons to control the indent click the indent button repeated times to increase the size of the indent click the dialog box of the paragraph group therefore that is this point that here you click here then click the indents and spacing tab select your indents therefore when you click on that button this is what you will see uh, you will be in a position to see the indents and spacing line and paragraph blocks then you can set uh, whatever you want there. Therefore, you can also control the line spacing from this point. Uh, you can choose the line spacing 1.5 double multiple lines here the, in the spacing. This is for the indentation. This is for general for alignment. Therefore, you have the alignment. You have the indentation. Then you have the spacing. They are all in the paragraph dialog box. Then you can add borders and shading. You can add borders and shading to paragraphs and entire pages. To create a border around a paragraph or paragraphs, select the area of text where you want the border and shading. Add, okay, then from there, um, click the borders button on the paragraph group on the home tab. Choose border and shading. Choose the appropriate uh, options. Therefore, you can do that you can click on this button i've shown you then you go down here you choose borders and shading then you can apply styles select uh, styles are a present correction or formatting that you can apply to text to your try quick styles select the text you wish to format click the dialog box next to the styles group on the home tab click the style you wish to apply Therefore, I have shown you very well how to go about it. Therefore, you just select your text. Then you go to styles group. Then click on this point here. Then you can also click uh, create links. That is hyperlinks. Creating links in our document allows you to put a URL that readers can click to visit a web page. To insert a link, you click the hyperlink button on the links group in the insert tab. Type the text in the text to display box and web address in the address box. You can practice on that. Then change spacing between paragraphs and lines. You can change the space between lines and paragraphs by doing the following. Select the paragraph or paragraphs you wish to change. On the home tab, click the paragraph dialog box. Click the events and spacing tab. In the spacing selection, adjust your spacing accordingly. Therefore, I've shown you how to go about it. You just click on this arrow, then this dialog box comes by. Then you just go to spacing. Then at this point, you choose your required spacing. Then on the other hand, um, 
you may opt to create new styles uh, or apply styles. Therefore, you just click on the styles dialog box, then you click on new styles button. Then you can add your styles. If I've shown you, you click on this button, then you just go to this point here, you add your new styles from the dialog box that uh, actually results are shown below. Therefore, you have seen how I have gone about it. You just type the name of your style you want. Insert the cursor anywhere in the chosen style. Click the styles dialog box. Click save selection as new quick style. Therefore, you're in a position to have these styles added here. That is for your new style. Then let's look at creating tables in Microsoft Word. We usually have two methods of creating tables. You can insert by instructing Microsoft Word how many rows and columns you want. You can also use the draw option, this one here. You can either click insert. You can also drag the cursor here on these uh, boxes. It will actually tell you how many columns and rows you have. Then you can also insert. Click on this one. It will ask you for rows and columns. This is the best method or you can draw. If it, in case it's a complicated table, just draw. Therefore, to create a table, press the cursor on the page where you want the new table. Click the insert tab of the ribbon. Click the tables button on the tables group. You can create a table by one of the four ways. I write the number of rows and columns. Click insert table and enter the number of rows and columns. Click the draw table, create your table by clicking and entering the rows and columns, or click quick tables and choose a table. Therefore, you can use in either of those four methods. Then, how do you enter data in a table? Press the cursor in the cell where you wish to enter the information, begin typing. Modify the table structure and format as a uh, format a table. Okay, to modify the table structure and format a table. To modify the structure of a table, click the table and notice that you have two new tabs on the ribbon, design and layout. This uh, pertain to the table design and layout. On the design tab, you can choose table styles option, table styles or draw borders. To format a table, click the table and then click the layout table on the ribbon. This layout allows you to view guidelines and properties from the table group, insert rows and columns, delete the table rows and columns, merge or split cells, increase and decrease cell size, align text within the cells and change the text directions. Therefore, these ones we call them on demand menu. This design and layout, they will only appear when you click inside the table. Otherwise, when you are outside the table, they are offline. You do not actually uh, see these two buttons. That is the design and layout. They, are, they only come to allow you to modify and format the table. Therefore, be very keen uh, on that one. You can also insert symbols and special characters in Microsoft Word, like I have described here. And therefore, special characters are punctuation, spacing, or typographical characters that are not generally available on the standard keyboard. To insert symbols and special characters, press your cursor in the document where you want the symbol, click the insert tab on the ribbon, click the symbol button on the symbol group, choose the appropriate symbol. You can still use the same method to insert an equation. Therefore, you can see we have the symbol and equation. And therefore, to, to insert equations in Microsoft Word, 2007 to 2019, they allow you to insert mathematical equations. To access the mathematical equations tool, press your cursor in the document where you want the symbol or equation. Uh, then you click the insert tab on the ribbon, click on equation button on the symbols group, choose an appropriate equation and structure or click insert new equation. Therefore, that's how you go about it. Therefore, you can see you click on the equation, then you can see the equations that have been uh, given for you. Or you can also insert a new equation for yourself. You can insert your new equation uh, down there. 
to edit the equation, click the equation and the design tab, um, the tab that will be available. Therefore, remember, I have taken you through um, on-demand menu. On-demand menus, this one are actually available in 2007 to 2019, as I have indicated. When you click on an equation, you will get the developer and design. Therefore, you get this one. And therefore, you can see you get various uh, symbols, various symbols that can allow you to come up with a new equation. You can try that one. And therefore, that one is just found when you insert an equation. Then you click on it. This one will appear to enable you to come up with your new equation. Then to insert a picture. Press your cursor in the document where you want to illustrate or insert a picture. Click the insert tab on the ribbon. Click the picture button. Browse to the picture you wish to include. Click the picture, then click insert. And therefore, I have demonstrated using Office 2019 how to do that one. You just go to insert, then you click on picture, then browse. That is insert picture. You can see how I have done it. Therefore, just click on the picture you want, then you click on insert. And therefore, that's how you insert a picture. Then we have Smart Art. Smart Art is a collection of graphics you can utilize to organize information within your document. It includes timelines, processes, or workflow. To insert Smart Art, press your cursor in the document where you want the illustration or picture. Click the Insert tab on the ribbon. Click the Smart Art button. Click the Smart Art you wish to include in your document. Click the arrow on the left side of the graphic to insert text or uh, type the text in the graphic. Therefore, I have demonstrated on how to go about it. Therefore, to insert a Smart Art, you just go to Insert. That is in Office 2019. This applies to 2010, 2013, 2016 also. Just go to Insert. Then you go to Smart Art. Then you see we have circles, processes, relationship, a lot of good stuff that is not actually imaginable. Hirache, you can also create organization charts from here. That is a Smart Art. Then in case you want to resize a graphic, all graphics can be resized by clicking the image and clicking one corner of the image and drag the cursor to the size you want the picture. Therefore, I have demonstrated how to, how to do it. You click on the photo, then you can hold this and bring it uh, diagonally, either inside or outside. Outside to increase, inside to, to reduce. Then we have watermarks. A watermark is a transparent, trans, uh, it's a translucent image that appears behind the primary text in a document. To insert a watermark, Click the Design tab in the ribbon. Click the Watermark button in the Page Background group. Click the watermark you want for the document or click Custom Watermark and create your own. To remove a watermark, follow the steps above, but click Remove Watermark. And therefore, in Office 2019, you just go to Design. It doesn't have page layout combined. You have design and layout. The other one is uh, you will get page layout as one button. Therefore, this one, you just go to design. Then you go to extreme right. You will get watermark. Then you can either use customer custom watermark. Uh, you can remove watermark. Or the, for the custom watermark, it allows you to come up with your own. But for Microsoft Word, you can use do not copy confidential this one. Eh? The way they are, but I would opt to use custom watermark. Therefore, you can practice on that. There are many features to help you proofread your document. Let's look at proofreading. This is identifying of spelling and grammar mistakes. And therefore, in Microsoft Word, you have a variety of features to help you proofread your document. We you have spelling and grammar checker. We have the Saurus autocorrect. You also have default dictionary and word count. Let's start with the spelling and grammar. To check the spelling and grammar of a document, press the cursor at the beginning of the document or the beginning of the section you want to check. Click the review tab on the ribbon. Click spelling and grammar on the proofing group. 
Therefore, I have demonstrated it for you. You just go to, uh, this is for uh, Word 2019. You go to review. Then the first button is spelling and grammar. And therefore, you can see we have spelling and grammar. That is in the proofing uh, group. This is, these ones are called group. We have uh, proofing group. We have language group. We have comments group. And therefore, for this point, you just go to spelling and grammar. You can also see where the thesaurus is, also word count. Therefore, you just need to go to review, then you can get those ones. Then this dialog box will appear. Any errors will display in the dialog box, and therefore you can either choose add to dictionary, ignore or uh, ignore ones or ignore all. Then you can use these ones. Alternatively, you can just right click on the word, then choose the correct, uh, that is the correct thing you want. Then you have the thesaurus. This one allows you to view synonyms. That is words with the similar meaning. You do the same. You click on the review tab on the ribbon, then go to the thesaurus. I have taken you to do that. Alternatively, you right click. See how I have de demonstrated for you. The word final. You just right click, then you go to synonyms, then you get a list on the thesaurus. That is the easiest method on earth. You just right click, go to synonyms, then you get everything displayed for you, other than the wrong method of going to the view tab, then the thesaurus. You can also customize autocorrect. You can set up the autocorrect tool in Word to retain certain text the way it is. To customize autocorrect, click the Microsoft Office button, that is for Microsoft 2007. For 2019, 2013, and 2016, you just click on Fire, then you go to options. Other than word options, you just go to options that I had shown you earlier. Then you go to proofing tab, then autocorrect options. I had taken you through this when you are looking at the features of Microsoft Word. Then on the other hand, uh, in case you want to perform word count, you just do the same in word 2007 or the way to word 2019, you just go to the uh, review tab then you have seen you go to a uh, word count. Alternatively, you can click the layout tab on the ribbon, then go to page setup. Uh, that is, uh, sorry, you go to a review tab, then you go to word count. Then you will get the words uh, there. Alternatively, you can just see word count from the status bar. Then to modify page margins and orientations, you just go to the layout tab. That is for Office 2013 to 2019. For 2010 and 2007, you just go to page layout tab. Then you in the ribbon, you'll get page setup group. Then you click on margins. Then you can adjust the margins like I have shown you here. You can have the normal margin or custom margin. Orientation, you just go to click to layout tab. Then orientation, you choose the radiscape or uh, portrait. On the other hand, you can somebody may wish to change the background. Just go to Design tab. That is for the Office 2013 to 2019. For 2007, uh, you go to the page layout. Then you can be in a position to uh, do that. To insert header and footer, go to Insert. Uh, you insert tab. Then you go to header and footer. Then you can type your header and foot. Alternatively, you just double click on the header and type your header or double click on your footer and type the footer. Then how do you create a page break? To create a page break, you go to the layout tab, like I have shown you. Then you go to page setup group. Then you click on breaks. Therefore, you just go to uh, layout. Then you go to breaks here. You will get the section breaks. Next page, all the breaks, event, continuous, then you click on next. Uh, you just click on whichever you want. To insert a cover page, you just go to insert tab uh, in the ribbon, then click cover page button on the page groups. Therefore, that one is also very important. Let's see how you create a table of contents. That is the TOC. To create the table of contents, put your cursor in the document where you want the table of contents. Click the reference tab. Click the tab uh, table of contents button.
Then once you do that, you might have added some data and you want to update the table of content. If you have added or removed headings or other table of content entries, you can update by apply headings or mark DVG entries as directed above. You click the references tab in the ribbon, then you click on update table, that is update table of contents. Therefore, this is how you go about it. You just go to references, then uh, table of content, you just choose one of these in case you want. Then you can also go to custom table of contents. You can also delete a table of content from here, remove table of content in case you want to delete. But once you are, you are done and you want to update, you just click on update table here. That is from the references tab and then it will be updated. To delete the table of content, I have taken you through how to do that one. Then you just click on the remove table of content. Then word 2007 to 2019 offers great tools for citing doc, uh, sources, creating bibliography, and managing the sources. The first step to creating a reference list and citations in a document is to choose the appropriate style that you will be using for formatting the citations and references. Style. To choose a publishing style, click the references tab on the ribbon, click the drop down box next to style in the citation and bibliography group, choose the appropriate style. Therefore, that one is also uh, very, very much important to note. Then, um, then we can also uh, look at that one. Therefore, when you talk, we are talking about citations, therefore you can see the style there. We have the Chicago, uh, we have the Taliban, we have the APA. You see where you get them in the references. Then you go to style, then you can choose Chicago or APA there. Citations. To insert citation in the text portion of your document, click the reference tab on the ribbon, click the insert citation button on the citations and bibliography uh, group. If this is a new source, click new source. If you have already created this source, it will, uh, it will, in the, it will be in the drop down list. Therefore, you can see how that one is. Therefore, just uh, uh, right now, this one, there is this one that had been already created. And therefore, you can also add your own, add a new source from the citation that is at this point. Therefore, that's how you do that one. If you are creating a new source, choose the type of source, e.g. book, article, etc. Complete the create source form. If you need additional feeds, be sure to click the show or bibliography feeds checkbox, then you click on OK. Therefore, this is how you where you create your new source. Therefore, you can see the publisher, city, year, title, author, then the type of book here, you choose the article that you are actually working on. Then you have press orders. We have the press orders. Press orders can be utilized when there is a reference to be cited, but you do not have all the information on the source. To insert a press order, click Insert Citation, click Add New Press Order. Uh, therefore, this is how you go about it. Insert this, then you go to Add a New Press Order. Then you can be in a position to add. To manage sources, once you have completed a document, you may need to add or delete sources, modify exit, uh, existing sources, or complete the information for the press holders to manage sources. Click the References tab on the ribbon. Click the Manage Sources button on the Citations and Bibliography group. From, the, from this menu, you can add, delete, and edit sources. Note, you can preview the source in the button pane of the window. Therefore, you can look at this window. Therefore, you can see how this one has been done. And therefore, you can use it as a, a, a running example. Then we have the bibliography. The bibliography. To add a bibliography to the document, 
place the cursor in the document where you want the bibliography, click the references tab on the ribbon, click the bibliography button on the citations and bibliography group, choose insert built-in biography stroke work cited or insert bibliography. Therefore, you can see that one, how that one actually uh, works from this point. Eh? Therefore, insert biography from the uh, dialog box there. Then we, you can also uh, need to insert footnote. Some types of academic writing utilize footnotes. To insert a footnote, click the references tab on the ribbon. Click the insert footnote or insert add note, depending on your needs. Begin typing the footnote. Then you can also need to track changes that you have done from previous document to the current document. To track changes, okay, track, track changes is a great feature of Word that allows you to see what changes have been made to a document. The tools for track changes are found on the reviewing tab of the ribbon. Therefore, to begin track changes, to keep track of the changes you will be making to a document, you must click on track changes icon. To start tracking changes, click review tab on the ribbon, click track changes. Make the changes to your document and you will see any change you have made. Therefore, you just click on this button here, uh, that is the track changes, then follow the steps on the previous uh, video above. Then we have document views. We had uh, 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 looked at this one, but probably it's also important to go through it. There are four ways of to view a document after you have tracked changes. Okay, this is uh, as per tracking changes. Therefore, you have final showing markup. You have final. We have original showing markup and original. Therefore, final showing markup. This shows the document with the changes displayed. Final. This shows the changed document without changes displayed. We have original showing markup. The original document with the changes displayed. Then the original. The original document without any changes. Therefore, you can use those you can switch between those ones to be in a position to see what you're actually doing. To change the view, click the appropriate choice in the tracking group of the review tab on the ribbon. Therefore, you just uh, go and review. Then you have this dialog box. You can see original, original showing markup, final, and final showing markup. And therefore, the explanation is actually in this session. To show markup feature, to show markup feature allows to view different items. We have comments, formatting etc, and choose to view different others' comments. Therefore, you can still do uh, tick these ones to make sure those options are really available. You can just make sure they are checked. And also, we have all reviewers here. Accept or reject changes. When you view the changes in a document, you can either choose to accept or reject the changes. This allows you to review the document by each change to accept or reject each change. And therefore, you can just click on accept or reject as shown here, accept and move to the next, accept change, accept all changes in the document just from the accept button. Then you have comments. The new comments icon also lets you to add comments to the document. To add a new comment, Put your cursor where you want or where you would like to add the comment and click on a new comment. Then we can look at the last session of this presentation. We have mail merging. Mail merging is the process of generating personalized letters or documents by combining a standard document, for example, a letter with a list of addresses and producing several copies of the standard document but address will be different for recipients. The standard document, that is the letter, is referred as main document, and the list of addresses is referred as data source. Importance of mail merging. 
Mail merge enables the user to send out the same document to several recipients at once. Secondary, combining a letter saves time when printing. Thirdly, the mailing list used in a mail merge can be reused on other document and write copy paste. Then the mail merge process. The mail merge process consists of four main steps. Number one, create the main document or open an existing main document. Main document is the common document or letter that is to be sent to all people of the mailing list. It is sometimes known as form letter. The main document contains the text and the graphics that are the same for each version of the merged document, e.g. the return address or salutation. Create the data source, that is the second step. Create the data source or open an existing data source with individual recipient information. Data source or address file is a file of data records of the people that will receive the form letter. The data source contains the information or data that varies in each copy of a merged document. For example, the list of names and addresses you want to use in the mail merge. That re Add merge feeds in the main document. Add merge feeds in the main document. Merge feed is a press order that you insert in the main document. It helps Microsoft Word insert the name of information that is stored in a particular data field. Merge or combine data from the data source with the main document uh, to create a new merged files. And therefore, for that case, we have three main files created in Minimatch. You usually have the primary file or the main document. You usually have the secondary file or the data source or addresses. You also have now the final document, which is called the merged document. Now, in Office 2019, you just go to mailings, then you go to mail merge, and then you can go to step by step mail merge. You can also create envelopes from this point and also email the messages. You can also create labels um, or stickers using the same wizard. Therefore, that is the end of my presentation. That is the end of Microsoft Word theory. Remember, I have done videos on Microsoft Word practical session for the same uh, content. And therefore, remember to subscribe if you have not subscribed.